What's up in War Eagle War Report family? You got I Jones back with another morning drop in today. We're talking about the safety position for Auburn's defense, a strength of the team last year. How can they recover from the losses that they took in that room? Let's talk about it. Y'all know how we do right here, War Report style. Let's drop it on them. You are you now, are now listening, listening, to listening to the War the Report. War Report. We are here. It is the Auburn Express Morning Drop, sponsored by the folks over at Rogue Shop. You got Ike Jones in here talking about the position of safety for the Auburn defense. Happy Tuesday morning to everybody out there. March the 26th. Hopefully everyone is having a good day. Get in here and talk a little bit more about the defensive side of the football for Auburn University. A lot more to talk about when we talk about this defense. Safety was one that was this Auburn team last year. So... Can it be a strength again this season, despite the fact that a lot of the guys that made a lot of the plays are no longer with this team? We're going to get into the details of who's no longer here. And listen, if you're an Auburn fan, you already know a lot of that. Uh, but let's just talk about the productivity from that um, that position last year. Last year, that uh, the safety position for Auburn was able to register three sacks on the year. Uh, they were accountable for 120 tackles. Uh, the leader in tackles from the safety position was Zion Puckett with 39 last year, four forced fumbles and eight interceptions. Um, part of that long streak of games in a row where Auburn was able to force turnovers directly attributable to what was happening from the safety position, forced fumbles and interceptions coming from that safety position was a big reason why Auburn was able to continue to be disruptive on defense early in the season last year. And, uh, and so it's big shoes to fill from the guys who are no longer going to be on the team coming into next year. So let's get started talking about the folks who are going to be gone from the team the departures from the team are as follows but the departures from the team's uh, team are as follows donovan kaufman donovan kaufman is a guy who had been a early in the season last year was just really wreaking havoc on offenses a disruptive force out there really doing a lot of really good things but as the season progressed you saw his snaps continuously decline uh, you know he saw a ramp up of in his in his snaps uh, when Keontae Scott went down early in the season and when he got back into the fold being Keontae Scott Donovan Kaufman started to dip down a lot more uh, they were playing them both you know kind of split in the minutes at that star position last year and uh, for whatever reason, as the year progressed, it became more of a Keontae Scott show. Uh, Donovan Kaufman was injured for a portion there in the middle of the season. Once we got into the Georgia game, you start to see really late game versus um, Cal. Both he and uh, Keontae Scott were, were hampered early in the season. And, you know, you saw some issues with him, uh, Deon Donovan Kaufman really not being able to finish games. Uh, and so he was dealing with some injuries last year, but uh, productive, as you can see, 395 snaps last year, transferred over to NC State during the offseason, which will be his third stop, uh, collegiate stop. He started his career at Vanderbilt, came to Auburn for a few years, and now over at North Carolina State. So wishing Donovan Kaufman the best. You know, we've had him on the War Report, great guy, um, definitely devoted team player. Again, one that is going to take a big hit as far as productivity over the last few seasons. Uh, Austin Osbury is a guy who came in highly touted out of high school, the Louisiana native, but never really found his footing in the um, in, in either of the defensive staffs that he was under. Only four snaps last year, uh, struggled uh, a little bit being able to cover. Going to be interesting to see how he's able to make the transition over. Uh, he did transfer out during the offseason. And, uh, you know, it's going to be – I'd be interested to see how often he's going to be able to get in the rotation uh, at his new landing spot. So Austin Osbury, not going to be as missed as far as a productivity, but somebody who I think a lot of people had their eye on as a potential difference maker in the room and just never really materialized in that way. Uh, next up, you have Zion Puckett. Shout out to Zion Puckett. Put on a pretty impressive show for his um, pro day. But he's a guy who I already mentioned led this group in tackles last season with 39, graduated and is going to pursue his career as a professional. Uh, good luck to him in the NFL draft or wherever he may land. 614 snaps last season. A guy who played well for Auburn but struggled at times in coverage and uh, just was – kind of slightly out of position, didn't let his instincts take over. Uh, by all accounts from his from the guys in that room, though, 
one of the more intelligent players in the defensive secondary, just kind of knew where people needed to be. But uh, it didn't seem to put it together all the time on the field, uh, which kind of led to him having some 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 situations where he was getting mixed in and out at that safety position. But productivity was there again, led the the safety position in tackles. Uh, so Zion Puckett, a guy who's going to be missed from that room and it, uh, hopefully is going to be able to make the transition over to whatever professional aspirations that he has. He's kind of one of those tweener guys that's a safety slash linebacker as far as his build, uh, but a guy that definitely has some potential at the pro level if they can find the right fit for him. Um, you know, he probably will, will, you know, if we're talking about projections forward, I'd say he would likely be a guy who is going to end up, if he's drafted a late round draft pick, probably restricted free agent kind of guy, uh, working his way up through the special teams ranks until somebody gives him an opportunity. But again, very intelligent player. And I, I, I expect if he makes it to be a pro, he's going to be a guy that is going to be very much about making sure he understands where he needs to do at the professional level, excuse me. Uh, next up, we have Marquise Gilbert. He was another guy who came in highly touted for this Auburn team. Uh, he was the number one rated safety out of junior college when he came over to Auburn and never really found a spot on either the initial Harson uh, defensive team or this uh, new team under coach Hugh Freeze. Only 42 snaps last year, entered the transfer portal, um, and I haven't seen his name pop up on any place as far as a commitment as of yet, but Again, just a guy that really never cracked the rotation. So but best of luck to Marquise Gilbert on his next uh, destination, but not a guy who from a productivity standpoint is going to be – that, that's going to be missing a lot from the locker room. Uh, but again, I, I heard nothing but good things about his work ethic, but hopefully uh, Marquise Gilbert finds a good landing spot for himself going forward. Uh, next up, I think most Auburn fans would say this is the biggest – guy that you're going to miss out of this room and that's Jalen Simpson the consummate Auburn guy uh 650 snaps the most snaps of anybody in that room he led the team in interceptions with four last season uh graduated of course moving on to the professional ranks he is a guy I expect his name is going to be called in the first three to four rounds of the NFL draft um just absolutely freakish athlete very instinctive and heady player from the safety position a guy who came in as a defensive back playing on the outside as a corner made the transition to safety uh the year before last and last season really flourished in his first full season at safety uh, just kind of opened up his ability to play sideline to sideline his 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 natural instincts of being able to kind of cover well or particularly when you're talking about covering guys uh, like tight ends he had the coverage skills but then he had the physicality to really be able to get guys to the ground a good tackler so um, you know Jalen Simpson is going to be the guy that's going to be missed so when you're about figuring out how to be productive or keep the productivity that you had last season from the safety position, uh, you know, missing guys like Jalen Simpson, Zion Puckett, and Donovan Kaufman from your roster there in that safety room is a lot to try to replace. Uh, from a talent perspective, I don't think that that's going to be something that's impossible to replace, but you can't replace the experience immediately. So it's going to be a, a tall task to figure out how you're going to get guys that are going to be able to be as productive as what you had walking out of the door from the safety position. So when you're talking about the productivity, uh, you can't forget that this room was coached by Zach Etheridge last year, right? So he's the guy that coined the phrase Jack Boys. When you talk about all of the turnovers that were generated out of this safety room, uh, Zach Etheridge was a guy who was coaching this room last year. And, you know, you bring in Charles Kelly, who's going to be his replacement. And Charles Kelly definitely has the pedigree to be able to get a safety room playing at a high level, particularly in the SEC. He has that background of being able to coach those guys. Uh, but it's a tall him coming into this season, not having guys who've played a lot of snaps to come in and be able to just step right into this new defensive scheme and uh, with, with new voices there leading the room. Going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Can that safety room be productive and be another strength we talked yesterday yesterday about the linebacker position it's a it's a room that I expect because of who you have returning in that room to be a strength for this Auburn defense can the safety room continue to have a position of strength for this Auburn defense even though you're replacing a ton of people in that room that were very productive for Auburn last season yet to be seen but definitely looking forward to seeing what pans out with that um, before we get too far into this conversation and start talking about the people who are returning for Auburn, let's get a quick word from our sponsor today. And 
over at BetUS when you are thinking about March Madness and all the things that are coming. Listen, NCAA futures are out there for college football right now. So if you want to put some stuff out there, go to BetUS.com. The link is right down there in the description of this video. 24-hour issue payouts, 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,500 using the link in our description. Uh, March Madness is still going on. There are plenty of in-game bets that you can do for the uh, March Madness tournament both in men's and women's um, collegiate basketball. So go ahead and hit them up right down there, description of this video, and or if you're listening to this on podcast, right there in the description, you can hit the link and sign up and make sure that you get yourself a little something for your time uh, for, for watching these games and, and put a little something on whatever your favorite odds are for anything. BetUS.com is where you can go and do that. All right, let's get back into the conversation and talk about who's going to be coming back for this Auburn safety room. Uh, there's a lot of names that are coming back, not a lot of snaps to be uh, to be seen from this group. Um, you know, let's start the conversation off with Terrence Love. Just go top to bottom here on this list. The sophomore, he played a few snaps last year, 68 snaps, really barely burned that red shirt uh, last season. Played well in his time. Terrence Love is a guy who I think is a very physical safety uh, who's going to have an opportunity to compete for one of those starting safety positions, at least at the two deep. I expect to hear Terrence Love when you start talking about the two deep rolling out as a guy who's competing for one of those spots. Um, and, uh, you know, he's going to be good for this Auburn team going into the future. But looking forward to seeing what Terrence Love is able to produce. The next guy, Sylvester Smith, didn't play a lot last year, only 29 snaps, but another guy whose physicality is something that people raved about when he came in last year, part of the freshman class, part of Coach Hugh Freeze's first class there. He initially was a guy that was looked at like he was going to go to Tennessee, but he came um, and flipped over to Auburn late in the process, played a few snaps there. But nothing really to write home about as far as experience, but another guy who's expected to step up and contribute in this defense and looking forward to seeing him take the next leap as far as his abilities to be able to go out there and compete at an SEC level. The guy who's got the most snaps in this room is Caleb Wooden. 218 snaps, the junior, of course, little brother of Kobe Wooden, um, current, uh, currently out there playing for the Green Bay Packers in the NFL. Kobe Wooden, solid contributor last year. Uh, you see his PFF numbers here, 76.6 and 79.8, his defensive and run grade, his tackling grade at a 75.9, uh, pressure rate 62.1, and coverage grade at 74.9. So 70 mid-70s across the board for everything except for pressures, but he was a guy who got had an opportunity to step down into that star position, particularly when Keontae Scott and Donovan Kaufman were dealing with their injuries. He was able to come in and do that. Was it the best at being able to go and attack in that manner or as far as if you compare to what Keontae Scott or Donovan Kaufman was doing, but very admirable in his ability to do that. Doesn't necessarily have the same speed as a Keontae Scott would have. A solid c contributor as far as his ability to be in coverage just didn't have the experience last year so you saw that lacking a little bit as he got into the rotation some but looking forward to seeing how Caleb Wooden progresses and where he fits into this entirety of the scheme coming into this next season. Next two guys here did not get any snaps. Mac McClinton, the sophomore, he is a walk on there. And then CJ Johnson, again, a part of that red shirt, excuse me, a part of that freshman class, that first class for Coach Hugh Freeze. Another guy who I think is kind of under the radar into this safety room as far as what he could potentially be. He's going to be a guy who can be rangy at safety for this team, and he's going to be able to be very physical at the safety position. So uh, I would not look past what C.J. Johnson could be. 6'2", 200 pounds, he's another one of those big guys playing at the safety position. Uh, kind of When you look at it, you know, like Caleb Witten, he's 6'1", 188. Sylvester so Fitzsmith, 6'1", 187. Terrence Love, 6'2", 222, right? So you've got some big guys in Terrence Love and C.J. Johnson. C.J. could be a guy that could factor in into a big physical safety, a rangy safety, uh, depending upon how they want to be able to play that. Don't know where his speed is right now, but it can definitely bring the physicality from that position. Uh, Paul Thompson Jr. was another guy who got a few snaps last year, not very many, as you can see, 10, uh, but and didn't grade out very great. You know, he's a walk-on guy. Don't expect him to factor in too heavily here. 
Griffin Speaks is an interesting one. He was the Baylor transfer last year, came over with Ron Roberts when he made the jump over to Auburn last year, and was a guy when you, if you call, if you all recall, at the beginning of the season when the two deep was released, Griffin Speaks was there listed as the backup safety. So he made the two deep on the initial release there, only played 47 snaps last year, and didn't grade out particularly well. I mean, he's not the most fleet of foot, but he's a very assignment sound, kind of understand what needs to happen kind of guy. Looking forward to seeing and I'm actually surprised, I'm going to be honest, I was surprised that he decided to stick around, even though he's from the Auburn area and this is home for him. Um, I was surprised that he's decided to stay in Auburn. Uh, but, you know, listen, uh, hopefully he's able to be a solid contributor for this team next year because he's on the roster. Last guy you have here, Josh Cohen, another walk-on guy. Did not see uh, any snaps thus far. Don't anticipate him factoring in too heavily into this entire race as far as the safety is concerned. But as you can see, there is a lot of inexperience right now in this safety room, which makes the additions that you have coming up in the safety room all that more important and makes this safety competition for who is going to be your starting say who are going to be your starting safeties for Auburn University next year an intriguing one so let's take a look at the additions to the room the additions to the room are as follows uh, you've got Jaron Thompson over from Texas right 568 snaps the biggest thing that jumps out to me when I looked at his PFF grades and when you look at the tape there's not like a I mean he, he played 568 snaps but I wasn't able to find a lot of tape on him it's the tackling uh, you know, bad angles, unable to get guys to the ground, whatever the reason was, 37.2 PFF grade on the tackling is going to be something that's got to be improved. Uh, you know, and Coach DJ Durkin uh, addressed or, or talked a little bit about the biggest thing that he's looking to get as far as, you know, coming out of the spring for this team is just kind of understanding where they need to be and improving the tackling. This is a unit that's going to have to tackle well and what DJ Durkin wants to for his defensive scheme. Uh, Jaron Thompson not having a very good tackling grade is a little concerning as a guy who you want to be able to step in immediately at the safety position and give you some assurances as far as guys who've been out there playing at a high level, playing at Texas already, being able to play in a Power 5 conference against some of the best competition, a, a team that went out there and competed so you want that guy to be able to step in and be a solid contributor for you. Uh, but that is concerning a little bit with the tackling grade there for one Jaron Thompson. Next up, you got Laquan Robinson. Now, he is the JUCO safety that came over, and I have heard nothing but good things about him as far as his ability to really be a thumper from that safety position and enforcer across the middle of the field. I am looking to seeing what we have in Laquan Robinson. 6'1", 198. He's not one of the bigger guys in that room, but I've heard that he's got the speed and the tackling ability to really be able to be an enforcer there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Laquan Robinson brings to this safety room and uh, and how he factors into the safety race. Again, this is one of the more intriguing uh, spring battles for me. I know people are going to get really caught up in the wide receiver and quarterback one because those are the ones that Auburn has struggled in a lot, but this is one of those positions safety where I think that there are a lot of guys vying for very few spots and are going to need to be heavy producers for this defense in order for it to continue to be one of the strengths of this team. Laquan Robinson's the guy I would look out for. Caleb Harris, the freshman, another one who, you know, 6'1", 196, he's a guy who's looked at as kind of a, a thumper, like he's a he's a, he's a downhill uh, enforcer type of safety. Looking forward to seeing what he is. True freshman, so I don't know how much he's going to actually factor into this and, and how quickly he can get acclimated to things, but there's a lot of people who are very high on this young man coming out of high school, and him being here in the spring gives him a heads up uh, and, and a leg up, excuse me, in this race to be able to understand he needs to do and, and how he fits into this defense. Looking forward to seeing what happens with him. Now, a guy who have, I have not heard a lot about or not a lot of hype about, and really when you look at kind of his size profile, uh, you know, Kinsley Lador Faustin is a guy who is more of a speed guy than he is a, a thumper. So maybe he can be a deep safety for this team. 5'11", 168 though, right? He's a he's a smaller framed guy. Uh, doesn't mean that he can't be a contributor at this level from the defensive back position, but you do want or not he's going to have the physicality to be able to tackle well. I um, mean, long as he's sound in his technique and angles, though, you know, physicality isn't the, the most important thing when you're talking about being a safety. It's about, especially if you're going to be the deep safety, it's about being able to understand kind of 
what your coverage rules are and then, you know, making sure that you get the guy to the ground. You don't have to deliver a big hit. You just need to be secure in the way that you tackle. So looking forward to seeing what uh, he's able to contribute as well. He's another guy that, and he, again, he's a true freshman, so he's got a lot of growth that you would expect for him to have to do. But I'm looking forward to seeing what that growth looks like. He's not someone right now that I would say would factor in too heavily into the safety competition coming out of the spring, going into the fall as far as ready to compete day one. But don't ever count out the young man. Now it's time for us to talk about the most daunted portion of this of who has the most to prove this spring. And for me, the answer to that one is actually Caleb Wooden. Caleb Wooden is a guy who has been kind of right there, right outside of the top two players in that room consistently. He has been a guy who has performed well in spots and, you know, he's had some some situations that have kept him off the field, uh, including injury. He's a guy that I think needs to step up this offseason. He has the most returning experience of anybody in this room as far as players at Auburn. Now, again, Jaron Thompson has more snaps than him, but he has the seniority in this locker room. And it's going to be interesting to see where he fits in as far as his ability to get into that upper rung to compete for starting safety for Auburn. I think that he should have the leg up again because he has most experience there, but you can't count out guys like you know, Laquan Robinson for coming in and stepping in doing that. I definitely don't want to count out a guy like Terrence Love, who I've heard, again, a lot of good things about how he competes out there. And he's got the physicality to be able to bring it at that position and be able to step in and play at this position. I definitely don't want to count out a guy like C.J. Johnson. I just talked about him. So. When I talk about guys who've been in this room, you know, Terrence Love, Sylvester Smith, C.J. Johnson, those are guys that I expect to compete. And then you bring in Laquan Robinson and Jaron Thompson into that conversation. There's quite a few names that you can throw in there. And that's why I think the guy that has the most to prove right now is not any of those new guys, right? It's not going to be Jaron Thompson. It's not going to be Laquan Robinson. Maybe you could throw in a Terrence Love or a Sylvester Smith in there as to whether or not they feel like they're being placed in the position where they're going to be able to really compete for one of those uh, top two roster spots when you start, start talking about the two deep depth chart. Guy for me that needs to land there is Caleb. Caleb's got to come out there and he's got to impress. Caleb Wooden needs to make his name known this spring so that he put, submits himself as one of those guys that can step in this fall and really be a contributor at a position that Auburn absolutely needs to be able to produce at because they're missing so much from last season. But that's enough of me talking. I want to hear from you. Who do you feel like has the most to prove in this room and can they step into some very big shoes that they have to fill for guys that are no longer on this team? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say on this. Before you get out of here, make sure that you are sharing the content. As always, the Morning Drop is brought to you by our show sponsor, Rogue Shop. Make sure you head to rogueshop.com and use code REPORT when you do that. That's America's number one online dispensary. Sleep stress, pain, anxiety, they've got relief for you at the Rogue Shop. Use code REPORT when you do it. Again, before you get out of here, like the video subscribe to the channel share the content with somebody make sure you let somebody else know what's going on over here at the war report and we definitely appreciate it we are not leaving a stone unturned we are going to talk about all of these position groups and we're not going to just talk about the 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 more attractive positions to have the conversation on we're going to talk about it all right here and i definitely hope that you all enjoy the conversation but we'll be back at you with more of this tomorrow morning in the morning on the morning drop but until then and as always war eagle